Hey, Michael, and welcome to our Spotlight series. Thanks, Dunya. Fantastic to be here. So can you introduce us to ReCarbon and its technology? I'm Michael Schmitz. I'm Executive Vice President of Product and Partnerships at ReCarbon. ReCarbon's a transformative climate technology company. We have a technology that can take greenhouse gases, particularly methane and carbon dioxide, transform those gases into clean fuels and products. We essentially take the bonds, break the bonds, and make those chemicals and products into fuels you can use for everything you can imagine, maritime, aviation, for long-term storage. The way we do it is using a microwave floating plasma reactor. Plasma is something that everyone uh, is familiar with, but very few people really truly understand. Plasma is the fourth state of matter. It's what the sun is made of, all the stars. In the universe, 97% of matter is in a plasma state. On Earth, you see it with lightning, you see it in other phenomena. Up until this point, uh, very few uh, efforts have been made successfully to control plasma. Our technology controls plasma, takes this extremely powerful state, and it allows for the disassociation, in our case, and the creation of clean fuels. What the, the technology offers is a way to, frankly, nothing short of revolutionary, dramatically reduce the amount of power required to create clean fuels and clean products, uh, while also dramatically reducing the carbon intensity of the process. We deliver on both cost and on carbon intensity. And that's really the, the true value. We, for all industries that require fuels, we can offer clean fuels, ones that deliver on the ability to move products, to move people uh, without contributing to climate change. And as far as I know, you have partnered with local governments, right? So can you tell me more about the partnership and how that partnership benefits the community? Fundamentally, we believe climate technologies, including ours, will only scale with partnerships as part of ecosystems. That's because we're trying to replace the entire globe's fossil fuel infrastructure. This is an infrastructure that has grown since the time when Edison perfected the light bulb, at least the implementation, when you went from whale blubber to uh, being able to create power and electricity without whales. And, and frankly, that's a long and global difficult history that we've gone through. Now we're at a breakthrough point. Uh, for us, we believe that these technologies will advance only with an ecosystem that involves all parts of society. It has to benefit the communities that are right now using fossil energy. It has to create jobs. It has to be able to help businesses grow. And frankly, governments need to be able to benefit. And we think that case has already been made with solar, with wind, with a lot of existing, um, what you're seeing, the development of existing uh, electric um, technologies. Uh, we take a fuels production process and use clean electricity. We're 100% electrified. Uh, as a result of that, uh, you can have a complete green production process. What you can get with that is you have fuels that are produced that deliver on a carbon promise as well as, as having a low cost. For a local government, we think that local governments strategically offer a what's known as a patient capital, if you will, Essentially, local governments can be a partner that are there for the long term because they have strategic interests in delivering goods for the people of the community. They are looking for, obviously, return on investment. They're looking for the best price, but they're also looking for the value when it comes to clean air, clean water, and, and uh, lower climate emissions. So in that way, there, it's actually a very strategic way for climate technologies to be able to scale. In particular, one thing that I would emphasize, um, and many of your folks know this already, that climate technologies, especially uh, hard tech, are very capital intensive, like all, all technologies that are not software, fundamentally. To be able to do that, you need investment, and you need a lot of investment. The challenge is that uh, you need it over a period of time on projects that require, frankly, more than a government can give uh, at one point, but also often more than uh, an a private uh, investor is willing to put into a particular project until you've shown it can work. And that's what people call a first-of-a-kind project. First-of-a-kind projects are just a way of saying new technologies 
that do the things that have been done up to date. Uh, the problem with first of a kind technologies is not that the technologies with the technologies is just that they're new. So one of the things that if you can show through working with a local partner, a government that makes you go through all the hoops and makes you prove your technology, but then you can deliver for that community. In our case, we're going to be delivering in one instance, clean hydrogen to a local government and a community in Northern LA County. If you can do that, show it works, and deliver on good, clean energy for that community, you can help make people's lives better and you can help that local government both uh, get return on investment, if you will, but also reduce the price of energy for their residents. So it, from a local government's perspective, it's a strategic investment if they find technologies that are cheaper and cleaner than what they're using right now. That's why we think strategically public-private partnerships are the way to scale up large capital-intensive projects that most climate tech is. And how does Recarbon's tech support the creation of clean fuels? And can this project be replicated elsewhere? So specifically, absolutely can be replicated elsewhere. In fact, our technology is designed to be scalable and modular. And what we start with is a literally a two-foot emission blade which is our fundamental technology, where our reactor is. That's where all the gases flow through at a very high rate. They're converted within milliseconds into a clean carbon negative syngas. The syngas then can be converted with off the shelf technologies to a number of really highly valuable and important uh, fuels like clean hydrogen, like green methanol, and like sustainable aviation fuel. A couple of those fuels are really coming into focus right now. Um, uh, green methanol, actually, the growth of green methanol is just ramping up, but is growing exponentially. And that's largely right now because of the demand for uh, green methanol for uh, large shipping companies. Uh, they're looking at how to reduce their carbon footprint. The EU has new requirements that effectively uh, act as a tax, a carbon tax on shippers. Uh, and there are some of the world's largest shipping companies are looking for replacement for bunker fuels. They're turning and looking at green methanol. In the same way, our process, which can lead to sustainable aviation fuel, meets an obvious and critical need of the aviation industry where they have to dramatically reduce their footprint, but there are no easy s solutions short of drop-in fuels that are dramatically less carbon intensive. That sustainable aviation fuels comes from a number of different processes, but that's the fundamental, the demand and the reason for SAF being so valuable. Our process and the reason we think in addition to the fact that we're, we can go from small to as large as you need is because we can also be distributed. We can be wherever there's a source of biogas or frankly, if you can take industrial off-stream gas from a power plant, a steel mill, and be able to use that in a methane source to create the, these clean fuels. If you go to a wastewater treatment plant, a landfill, any source of biogas, which there are wherever we have human civilization, you can take that gas right now, which is often either just vented or flared. You can take that gas and create clean fuels with our technology directly. And what that means is a small town in Iowa, a large city in Argentina, a, a village in sub-Saharan Africa, all these places can be able to take their biogas and convert them to clean fuels, which can be used in hydrogen's case. You can use that to power the uh, long-term duration storage to be able to use as electricity source. You can use it for vehicles and you can use it. There's a, whole, a, a slew of uh, opportunities to be able to use clean hydrogen. There are also products that we can make. We can help decarbonize a slew of different products uh, that right now, for instance, chemical companies and steel mills are using dirty processes and coming out with high carbon intensity products. Our production process can decarbonize those as well. Great. And for, for our audience who wants to research more about what you're doing, where can they find you? The easiest way is reach out to us through our website, recarboninc.com. Please do reach out. We're based in Fremont, California. We have uh, four projects that we're working on right now. 
demonstration projects to be able to both deliver those fuels. And we're looking at clean hydrogen, we're looking at uh, green methanol, and we're in conversations about sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, the bottom line is we want to be able to show people out there in the world. We've already run this at several different locations, one in Korea, one in Tennessee. We've run at landfills. We've gone for 2,000 straight hours with our technology, just producing with no hitches, no hiccups, rather boring. It's so stable, which is proof of how it's going to work with all these different uh, deployments. So reach out to us through our website. We'd love to talk anytime. And, and we love the opportunity to be able to share this. It's an educational process. We know if you have something new, we know our stuff is, is transformative. First, you have to introduce yourself. You have to show it works. And then it's going to be off to the races. We're very excited. Thank you, Michael. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you for watching New Perspective Spotlight series. If you like our content, please consider subscribing to our social media channel and follow our podcast on your favorite streaming platform. Thanks.